Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, before we begin, inshallah, um, I just want to say that this uh, does not, this uh, Friday talk, this Friday khatra does not take the place of the Friday khutbah. I'm sure everyone is aware of this. I just want to make sure it's reiterated. So please, inshallah, after we do finish here today, uh, please pray Salat al dhuhr as you would on any regular day. And if your family is around you, please do uh, pray jama'ah with your family. Um, Bismillah, Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we begin with his name. And we begin by sending peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his companions and upon those who follow him. I want to start off by saying Ramadan Mubarak to everyone tuning in today. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invited us again into the month in which his kalam in which his words, in which his Qur'an was revealed for this ummah. It's a month of his mercy, in which his mercy overflows. It is a month of his barakah, a month in which his barakah overflows. It is a month unlike any other months. It is a month of community. It is a month of congregation. It is a month of connecting with our ummah as a whole. It is a month in which the masajid are full of worshippers during the nighttime and the daytime. But many of us know that this month in the year of 2020, the Ramadan of 2020, is different than this. We have gone from being a month of community, of togetherness, of connection, to a month of seclusion and to a month of isolation. And to many of us, including myself, we feel very different about this month. Right. This month feels very different than other Ramadans. And this is the first time, I think, in really the history of the world. Plagues have come before, diseases have come before, wars have come before. But something affecting the Muslim world, the entire world, to such a great degree internationally, such that almost every single message on the face of the earth is closed, I'm not sure if this has ever happened before. And so many of us, again, including myself, feel very different about this month. And we may feel that it may not be as fulfilling for us. Or we, feel, we may feel that it may not be as fruitful for us. And most importantly, we may feel that we may not be connect, we may not connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as we would have been able to in the setting of a masjid. And so I didn't really understand how much I would miss the masjid until Last night, when I stood for Taraweeh with my family, we stood last night and we prayed. And it's the first time, I think, in my life that I prayed at home without the option of going to the masjid. And our family, we led Salah, alhamdulillah, we had the chance to do that. But I really realized at that moment how much I missed praying in congregation with my brothers and sisters in the masjid. And that blessing that we have to go every single night in Ramadan and hear the Qur'an being recited from people that have memorized it and how great of a blessing that is. And a few days ago, my local masjid, the Islamic Society of Baltimore, they had this live stream to prep people for Ramadan. And one of the panelists was my Qur'an teacher, Qari Muhammad Zahid. And it was asked to him, Qari Zahid, you have led Salah, you have led Taraweeh for so many years. How does it feel to not be able to go to the masjid and lead salah. And he said, this is the first time in over 30 years that I have not led salah, I have not led taraweeh at the masjid. And as he was sharing this, he began to tear up and he began to cry. My brothers and sisters, this is a different month. This is a different type of Ramadan. But that doesn't necessarily mean it will not be a beneficial Ramadan. And so I hope in the next few minutes in the next 20 minutes or so, that I can offer you a different perspective. A perspective from the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, a perspective from the lives of some of the Prophets that we know, السلام, that inshallah, I hope will grant us some more hope in this situation that we are in. I want 14, 40 years to the time of Mecca, the Banu Hashim within the Quraysh, to a man by the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam before he was the Prophet. 
he was preparing for his third year of practicing tahannuf, this idea of solitude, this idea of contemplation. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like we know from his sirah, was a man that never believed in the idols. No matter what, he never was a mushrik. And he always believed in the oneness of this deity, but he did not know who it, this deity was or what connection he had. So he would spend time in Ramadan because Ramadan was still a holy month for the Arabs at that time. He would remove himself from his home. He would remove himself from his family, from his community, from his people. And he would go into seclusion in this state of tahannuf, this idea of meditation. And he would contemplate upon the creation of this, this God, this ilah, and he would envelop himself in the remembrance of this deity, of this Allah that he knew so little about, but he believed that this was required upon him. And so he would remove himself from the distractions of this world. And it is in this state of tahannuf, this state of solitude and, and uh, aloneness of seclusion that on the 21st of Ramadan, as Sheikh Mubarak Puri mentions in Ruhiq al Makhtum, that Jibreel alayhi salam approaches him for the second time in his life and he speaks to him and he says, Iqra, read. And he squeezes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ma ana biqari. I do not know how to read. I am not a reader. And he squeezes him. And the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are revealed. اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم Read, read in the name of your Lord خلق الإنسان من علق The one who created outside of the out, mankind from a clot right? The one who taught by the pen and taught man what he did not know it is in this, it is by the virtue of the seclusion of the Prophet wasallam, by the virtue of his aloneness, of him being alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without the distractions of the world. It is by that virtue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him the Qur'an. It is by the virtue of being alone and focusing and contemplating on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he became Habibullah, he became the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I want to take us back even farther to the tribe of Bani Israel and what we know as Egypt today to the Prophet by the name of Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam is told in Surah A'raf verses 140 onwards to seclude himself for 30 days plus 10. And during this time of seclusion, he is asked to fast and he is asked to pray. And in this period of seclusion, what a person feels is that the distractions of the world leave them. That they are alone and the only one with them is Allah. That in this period of seclusion, they are not worried about work. They are not worried about feeding their family. They are not worried about the worldly matters. They are only worried about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and themselves and their relationship with the creator of the universe. And so Musa alayhi salam after his 40 days are completed as he begins to travel back to the Mount Sinai where he has, where the left, where he has left Bani Israel and with them his brother Harun alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before he leaves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the virtue of this seclusion reveals to him the tablets and the Torah. By the virtue of this seclusion, Musa alayhi salam converses with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. By the virtue of being alone, by the virtue of the worship that comes with you and Allah alone, that's it. There is nobody else. That there is a sweetness that comes from from just secluding yourself with Allah. And he is given the Torah and he is given the name Kalimullah, the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to directly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he uses seclusion, 
He uses isolation as preparation for the Prophet wasallam. Three years, he would seclude himself on and off throughout the month of Ramadan. Why? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him do this? Because it was to test him and to prepare him for the message that he was going to carry. And for the importance of understanding that when everybody else leaves you, when the world is shut down, Allah is not only in the masjid, Allah is with you everywhere. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, He is with you wherever you are. So seclusion is preparation. Preparation for the prophets to connect with their people and to understand the gravity of their message. And now we move to Egypt again, except to a different timeline. To even before Musa alayhi salam, we come to the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. And Yusuf alayhi salam, his story is very special in the fact that seclusion is not, is not abnormal to Yusuf alayhi salam. Many difficulties happened to him. And every difficulty that happened to him was surrounded by this theme of isolation and seclusion. First, he is thrown in a well alone by his stepbrothers. Alone in this well, he is thrown in complete isolation. And Shaykh Umar Sulaiman, he mentions in the story of Jibreel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Jibreel alayhi salam to keep him company. That when you are alone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends you company of the malaika, of the angels to keep you, to keep you safe. And he is found in that well by a caravan. And he is taken as a slave and he is finally sold to the Aziz of Egypt at that time. And he is raised in that court. And finally, as we know, the Aziz, his wife, Zulaikha, she attempts to seduce Yusuf alayhi salam. And the words of Yusuf alayhi salam, I want you to focus on them. He says, it is more beloved to me. Prison is more beloved to me than what she calls me to. And she then blames him for approaching her and he is thrown in jail. Now, can you imagine forced isolation of prison? How difficult that might be on a person. Imagine the parallels that we're feeling between our own situation and the situation of Yunus, Yusuf alayhi salam. That he is thrown in jail. He is not at fault. And the difficulty and the, and the, and the upset and the grief that he must feel in this time but it is during this time, it is during this time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants to Yusuf alayhi salam the ability to interpret dreams. And through this gift of interpreting dreams that he receives from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an imprisonment through solitude, through connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ultimately he ends up becoming one of the leaders of Egypt. And not only that, the same brothers that threw him in that well, they find him and he reconnects with them and he forgives them. And not only that, more importantly, he connects with his father Ya'qub alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, answers his duas by the virtue of his seclusion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was preparing this great prophet through difficulties, through trials, through trials of seclusion, to focus only on Allah. Because when Allah is the objective, nothing else matters. And when you focus on Allah, when you focus, Allah subhanahu wa says, when a person focuses on the akhirah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them the akhirah and the dunya. But when the person focuses only on the dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the dunya away from him and, and the akhirah. Now finally, we travel to the city of Nineveh in northern Iraq to Yunus alayhi salam and his people. And this is personally my favorite story of a prophet. Because Yunus alayhi salam, 
he ascends to his people and he preaches to his people calling them sincerely to Islam and they turn him away such as many of the prophets peoples have done to them but Yunus alayhi salam as was mentioned in Surah Al-Anbiya he becomes upset with them he becomes upset with his people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَذَنُّونِ إِذْ ذَهَبَ مُغَاضِدًا فَظَنَّ أَلَّا نَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ فَنَادَى That Yunus alayhi salam he says remember the man of the whale he does not even say Yunus alayhi salam's name in this passage in Surah Al-Anbiya he says وَذَنُّون and the man of the whale remember him remember that when he went off angrily from his people that his people treated him so unkindly that he was angry with them and he left them and he left his position as a warner, as a prophet. And he hopped onto a boat that was leaving the area. And as they were traveling on that boat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a storm. And that storm rocked the boat so greatly that the people became scared. And they began to draw lots. And whoever got a specific lot, they said, we will throw them off the ship. Perhaps us having less weight on the ship will prevent our boat from capsizing, prevent our ship from capsizing. And so the first lot, it landed on Yunus alayhi salam, and they said, we will not throw you over. The second lot was picked, and again, it landed on Yunus alayhi salam, and they said, we will not throw you over. Then the third lot again landed on Yunus alayhi salam, and then he was thrown over. Now, often when these stories are mentioned to us, we don't internalize what they really mean. I want you to imagine yourself on a ship in the middle of the ocean during a storm and you are thrown off a ship. You are drowning. The water is entering your lungs. There is no air to breathe. Imagine the grief. You've given up at that point. It's done. But Ibn Mas'ud he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent from the green sea a large fish that traversed the water very quickly and it ate Yunus alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded that fish to not swallow him or to not break his bones and not eat him, just to keep him in the stomach. Awf al Arabi, one of the great scholars of Qiraat, he relates that Yunus alayhi salam, when he was eaten by this whale, he actually thought, when he was swallowed by this whale, he thought he died. It was only when he realized that his feet were moving that he realized that he was alive. Now I want you to really imagine, because this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this happened to a person, this happened to a prophet. He was eaten by a whale. I want you to imagine yourself within the stomach of a whale. And as all animals, there is acid within the stomach of animals to help digest. And the acid is burning you as you are in the stomach of this whale. The stomach is constricted as Ibn Mas'ud says. And you are squeezed in this position. You are in such desperation, such loss of hope, and you are alone. You are secluded from everybody and everything. You are isolated from everybody and everything. The only thing, the only one with you, وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ And He is with you. Allah is with you. أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ Wherever you may be. And Yunus alayhi salam, when he realizes that he can move his feet, he makes a sajda in the stomach of the whale. And he says, he cries out, he says, Oh Allah, I am making a prostration to you. I'm worshiping you. I'm calling out to you. Why well, I don't think anybody has ever called out to you before. And the angels, they hear this. And they say, This is a voice that we recognize. But it's coming from a very strange place. From the belly of a whale. And Ibn Mas'ud says this whale goes so deep into the ocean, so deep into the ocean that Yunus 
hears the tasbih of the rocks on the bottom of the ocean. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. And at this point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He calls out within the darknesses. He yells out within the darknesses. And Ibn Mas'ud says, The darknesses here are meant by one, the darkness of the night sky, two, the darkness of the stomach of a whale, and three, the darkness of the ocean. That this whale had gone so far into the ocean that light could no longer penetrate. And Yunus alayhi salam, he is, he is given this idea to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is inspired by the rocks beneath him that are saying, subhanAllah, he says, La ilaha illa ant. There is no ilah except you, O oh Allah. There is no God except you. There is nobody with me except you. Subhanak, how perfect are you? Inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Inni kuntu min al He says, indeed, I was the one that was wrong. Seclusion, isolation, grief. Look at, obviously, this example is much higher than the example that we're going through. But look at the sincerity that he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. And I want you to think of the fact that you were in the stomach of a whale. Forget going back to your family. Forget surviving. The only thing Yunus alayhi salam is focused on is, May Allah forgive me. Subhanak, inni kuntu min al I was the one that, that was wrong. And sincerity, this one sincere dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifully replies. He says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ And we answered him. And the fa in the Arabic language in this connotation is immediacy. فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ We immediately responded to him. وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمْ Now look at the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He recognizes the feelings of this Prophet. He recognizes the feelings of this human being. He says, and we saved him from his sadness. We saved him from his sadness. This man that thought he was going to die by drowning, then eaten by a whale, thinking he will die within the stomach of a whale, who calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this Prophet alayhi salam, calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with absolute certainty, absolute sincerity. In isolation, alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes the fish to go to the shore near his home, his town, and it spits him up. And Shaykh Umar shares that Yunus alayhi salam is lying down. The stomach acids are over him. The sun is burning that acid on him. And he gets up and he goes back to his people, ready for his mission. And Imam Qurtubi, rahimahullah, he shares that this town of Nineveh, 100,000 people that had not believed in Islam, that had pushed this man away, that had angered him so greatly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمْ So we answered him immediately. وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمْ And we saved him from his sadness. Now look at the Look at the answering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That all Yunus alayhi salam was asking for was forgiveness. But because of the sincerity of his dua, Imam al-Qurtubi says, he walks into his hometown of Neva, finding every single member of 100,000 people is now Muslim. SubhanAllah, look at the answer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in du'as that are made in isolation. And sincerity, only focusing on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, we are going through a month of seclusion when we are used to a month of community. We are going through a month that's going to be very different than other Ramadans. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the fact that He has given us seclusion to find Him and Him alone. That we in our homes, in the darknesses of our homes at night, that our homes are illuminated with hidayah, with the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through remembering Him alone. 
I shared the story of my teacher in the very beginning that he was saying that he has never missed, he has led Taraweeh for 30 years in the masjid and he was crying as he was saying this. He smiled at the end and said, but I also never got the chance to cook jalebi with my family before. So now I have the chance to do that. Spending time with family, spending time with your parents and your spouses and your kids, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that easy for you in this month of Ramadan to worship alongside those of your family, to worship alongside those who you want to enter Al-Firdaus Al-A'la with the highest level of paradise. That you are now alone in the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you worship Him in a way that you connect with Him. When you are in a gathering, sometimes it's hard to focus only on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has now given you the option. Rather, He is giving us this opportunity to meet Him alone, to worship Him alone, to connect with Him alone. They plan and Allah plans. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. This is a month where many Muslims are falling sick. Many non-Muslims are falling sick. Our brothers in Islam and our brothers in humanity are falling prey to this coronavirus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends these signs, but they don't have to be punishments. If a great trial turns you away from Allah, that is a punishment. But if a great trial causes you to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to connect with Him, then I guarantee you, you will not treat it as a trial, you will treat it as a blessing. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the people that are sick, healthy. Allahumma shi marwana wa marwana muslimin. May Allah heal our sick and the sick of the Muslims. May He remove this coronavirus from our, from our earth honestly and keep us safe from any kind of pandemic and plague. The Prophet وسلم, gave us du'as to protect us from this. One of which is Bismillah al-Ladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fi al-ardi wa la fi al-sama'i wa huwa al-sami'u al-alim. Recite Ayat al-Kursi every single morning and evening. Remember your morning and evening adhkar. Spend time with your family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this month to be one in which we are guaranteed the forgiveness, the pleasure, and the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alongside our families, alongside our friends, and alongside the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May he remove this plague and this difficulty from us. May he allow us to correctly spend these 30 days in solitude, only worrying about him and connecting with him. This is a special time. And this is one test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to remind us of who is in charge. That this little virus brought the entire world to its knees. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will force the world to their knees on the day of judgment. You will see every single nation upon its knees on the day of judgment. May Allah save us from humiliation on that day. Save us from difficulty on that day. Make us amongst the companions of the Siddiqeen, the Shuhada, wal Nabiyyin, wal Mursaleen, the companions of the Prophets and the Messengers and the Martyrs and the Truthful Ones and make us amongst them and grant us the highest level of Firdaus and free our scholars across the world that are imprisoned. Help the Muslims, the Uyghur Muslims in China, the Kashmiri Muslims, the Muslims of Palestine, the Muslims of Syria, the Muslims of the Central African Republic, Wherever the Muslims are suffering, may Allah grant them victory. And it's funny, I'm going to end on this last note, that in Idlib, the same place that we were praying for, our masajid that were full for last year, we were praying for them in our masjid. While their masajid were empty, this year, because there is no coronavirus there, their masajid are full and our masajid are empty. May Allah accept the du'as for us. I will end on this last narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is narrated in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported to have said by Abu Hurair Radiallahu An those in seclusion have raced ahead they asked O Messenger of Allah who are those in seclusion and he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied they are the men and the women who remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala often and in another narration he replied they are those who are absorbed absorbed in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Jazakumullahu khayran. Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar.